Hey everybody, this is David at Barnyard Bees. It's rainy, it's cool. I've been wanting to try to get in the videos and do a little kind of show what's going on at this time of year. Uh, it is, today's November 6th, I believe, or 5th. Let's track what day it is. But anyway, what we want to talk about today is the difference between the bees now and the bees in the spring and this this kind of goes out to the the new beekeeper uh, a lot of or the inspiring beekeepers a lot of people don't know that the bees that are in our hives now will be the ones that over winter all the way through the winter and these these are the longest living bees and there's a lot of reasons for that uh, a lot of it just it's just you know evolution of course that and they're not worked at all hardly they're not overworked they will pick up pollen and sweets throughout the winter if they can if they can find it but they're not like uh, like you see a working bee work herself to death and they're dead within a, a very short amount of time and their life cycle is is uh, very fast you know they don't live very long and but these bees that are in the hives now will live all the way through until spring until they start multiplying again and then those bees will start over a whole different cycle than the ones that are in the hives now now a lot of you don't know too a lot of this is kind of going out to the new beekeepers trying to get the new beekeepers understanding of how the bees work in, on a year round basis. So these bees, when it gets in the 40s at nighttime or daytime, the bees will go into a cluster to keep warm in the bee inside, uh, the queen inside. And the cluster, say for example, if you have a hive, the cluster is basketball size. That size will reduce throughout the winter and get smaller and smaller. And then come spring, it, it'll build back up. Now, a lot of people don't know this as well, is that the queen throttles way down, meaning her, per, her egg production slows down. It never stops. If anyone ever thinks that, go back and look at some of my older videos where I've pulled them out just for an example in December and January, and there is eggs, very small, very small clusters that they lay it's very small but they never do stop they never do stop if anyone ever tells you the queen quits laying through the winter it's not true and it's not something i recommend you never want to get into your hives if really at all because now they'll have a propolis seal if i would go around it and try to pop these open they they would be more difficult because we've let that let them seal it up for the winter and they know and i've talked about this too the airflow they know exactly how much airflow they need ventilation uh very important throughout the winter i'm kind of rambling on and going off subject a little bit but what i was wanting to do was get into the colonies and pull out some frames and show you how the pattern looks at this time of year uh, there's different things that causes that the shortness of the days the coldness uh, a lot of that uh, the amount of pollen nectar coming in everything slows down and it triggers that queen to slow down as well so that's what dictates how she lays in the spring as the days gets longer as the nectar flow starts coming in the pollen flow she'll start throttling up She'll start uh, laying eggs, and and that that'll be your best time of year. And with us, it's this is in North Georgia. Our best time, where the where the queens lay the most, and everything is full production, is mid-April. Now it's different wherever you're at in in the country, of course, but that's here in North Georgia. So our plans for right now is I still got sugar water mixed up and i need to put them on today it's 
two parts sugar, one part water, like I've talked about before in, in a couple videos past this one. Uh, December 1st, we all, here, now don't always go by what we do here because in your part of the country, you're going to have to adjust and find out from other beekeepers when they start, when they stop feeding sugar water. And a lot of people will go with uh, sugar cakes, whatever you call the, the little, uh, I've made them before, but I don't, I don't even use them. And I'll do a video here in a couple weeks. December 1st is when we will put dry sugar in. Now, we don't put it, there's, there's different ways of doing it. You can lay a paper towel newspaper on top of the frames and pour your sugar on. I'll do the demonstration. Uh, we use our feeders. We don't, this way, you don't have to break the propolis seal with the type of feeders, the high top feeders that we use, the round rapid feeders. It's uh, it's so much better for the bees. You don't have to break the propolis seal. If you run out, you can just add more, and it doesn't disturb them. So, but I'll make that video here in a couple weeks, December first, when it gets ready. So, I just wanted to kind of put that out for the new beekeeper uh, about the bees and the cycle of the bees and how they they uh, are different. You get these are these are different kind of bees. Um, Everything about them is different. Their uh, demeanor is very different. Uh, at this time of year, uh, bees can be very angry, very aggressive, and for good reason, in spring or summer, or even in fall, early fall, if something would get into the colony, they could swarm off to another location and start over. If it happens now, they're done. There's nothing can save them. Not unless they would somehow luck into a, a dead out hive somewhere that still had existing honey and they moved in there that would be their only chance of making it to this time of year or if they happen to swarm and you happen to catch them fast and get them into a colony and, and add the resources you need but on their own more than likely they're not going to make it if they have to if a bear or something like that would get into them and destroy the hive so that's why they got to be so aggressive now so a whole different type of bee the bees are like i've always said and and you see me demonstrating in other videos pulling the honey out in uh june in the june and the bees are just super friendly it doesn't matter if it's a little hive big hive uh triple triple deep four deep i don't care and a lot of people say, well, you you know, you won't do that with our colonies. Well, you know, I'm kind of rambling and getting, getting off subject a little bit, but those bees are genetically better. Our bees are because they're just naturally calmer bees. And the the timing today, I don't know if you can see the, the overcast. It's rainy. It's cold, about 50 degrees. Uh would be the worst time of the year and time of day and everything would be completely against you if you got in there now if i would open these highs regardless of how mild they are these bees are going to tear me up so you just got to kind of learn your bees and learn how these bees go from month to month how, how they how they operate and that's that's the biggest thing when it comes to beekeeping is learn your bees and how they change from month to month to month and now is a time of year where you don't want to disturb them you don't want to get in your colony don't be tempted to get in and have to check in the middle of winter you don't need to do that uh, keep adding the dry sugar we add sugar for the insurance policy that if they would happen to run out of uh, of honey that they can resort to this now usually when you add the sugar It'll take a couple of weeks for it to cake over and get hard. And once it gets hard, they'll start feeding on it. But until it's hard and it's still uh, uh, loose granulated sugar, they won't touch it. And and usually they won't touch it anyway as long as they got a good resort. Once they start seeing their honey deplete, before it runs out, they'll start feeding on that, that uh, hard sugar. 
so it, it means a lot and, and, it, and it saves a lot of colonies. So, so make sure you do that, but stay tuned for the, in a couple of videos from now, we're trying to get out a video every other week now, uh, usually start in October and I do this every year instead of going once a week where I have throughout the year, I'll go every other week. I'll go to, to a month. So it's just, it's hard uh, to make a lot of content when the bees aren't flying. You can't get in and demonstrate stuff. So, so just stay tuned, please, for the next video in about two weeks. We'll get into the colonies, and I'll show you how we're going to do that to the dry sugar. I may squeeze another video in uh, before that one. So just kind of don't forget. Click on the little bell, like, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Barnyard Beast.